we will take a look at some tips for filming because recording video, uh, particularly taking video of yourself, is a difficult thing to do. Uh, so some tips there on how to get the most out of the equipment that people have because everyone will have different cameras, different um, equipment. Some will have access to better equipment than others and we'll take a look at how to get the most out of what people do have and how to try and get some sort of consistency across your group uh, to try and make it easier when editing things together. We'll take a look at audio, how to get good audio. Um, the majority of what we're trying to do here is to get something that sounds really good as well. And in actual fact, if you have a performance that sounds really good, it, it doesn't really matter too much if the, the video clips within that are not quite as uh, as clear or as good. But if it doesn't sound good, it, it's really going to detract from the end result. So we'll look at some tips on how to get the best possible audio for your virtual band performance as well. I'll then talk about sending files across the internet. At the moment, because of this whole lockdown situation, we find ourselves unable or restricted in how we can meet up with people um, to hand files or memory cards and things over. We'll look at options for sending these video files to the person who has the, the privilege and the, the pleasant job of editing it all together for your group. Um, I'm then going to try, hopefully, um, to edit together three clips that have been sent to me by our musical director. Um, so I perform, I'm a percussionist with Irvin and Drekon Brass Band and Lewis Bettles is our musical director. Uh, Lewis has very kindly filmed a, a trombone trio for us. So I'm going to try from scratch to edit together uh, during this presentation three video clips from that trio just to show you the workflow and what it might look like. And it'll also hopefully show you um, where all of these tips make a difference when it comes to putting the video together. Um, and if you do these things right, how much easier it can make it to get quickly get to you know, your, your finished result that sounds pretty good and looks pretty good as well, hopefully. I'll then take a quick chat about equipment and software. Uh, obviously you need equipment to do this, you need a computer, you need cameras, you need microphones, you need access to the internet, we need all sorts of different types of software to start and applications to bring all of this together. So we'll have a chat about that as well. Uh, and it does include three options, something that I felt was quite important. Um, not everybody has access to funds or resources to go and buy expensive video editing software. So there are three options here that we can use as well. And then at the end, hopefully, if there are one or two burning questions, if, if John is monitoring the chat. If we do have time, I might try and answer one or two questions in the presentation. But any questions that I don't get to in the course uh, of, of the presentation, I will either do a video or I'll publish something over the coming weeks uh, to address all of the questions at the end. So planning and communication. It's going to be difficult for your band members to perform on their own uh, in their own house or somewhere else without the band around them to support them. So keep your music selection simple, especially for the first couple of um, virtual performances that you undertake. There's going to be more challenges than just the playing of the music. So select something that is within the ability of every band member that they are comfortable with. It might well be a piece that they have played before um, for this, the first couple of, for the first couple of videos. Agree on timings. It's very important that your band members or your choir, if it's a choir that we're looking at here, it's very important that they play accurately to a reference track, which we will touch on later. So agree on your timings so that you can prepare that reference track before people start to film, because any changes will require people who have already filmed to go back and start again. So before you start, sit down, select your music, agree on your tempo, agree on timings. If there are pauses, agree on how they will be handled, uh, how long will the pauses be, and how will that be built into your, your reference track so that people know exactly when to move on, when to pause, and so on. 
speak to your band, brief them on what you expect from them and make sure that they understand it. Um, it's, it's too late, three days before your deadline, when you start to edit those videos together, to realise that someone has interpreted an instruction differently from the rest of the band and they believe that they're playing as instructed, but actually they're not, they're doing something different. So make sure at the start that everyone is happy with what you're asking them to do, how you expect them to set up their equipment, how you expect them to send the video files. Make sure everyone knows every little detail of what's expected well in advance so that you don't run into problems later on. And allow plenty of time. Um, this can be a time consuming process. I would say five, six weeks um, and two or three weeks of that at the end is going to be the time to bring all the videos together, edit them together. Of course, it depends on the amount of time that the person who's going to do the editing has spare, but please allow plenty of time. Don't, don't leave it to the last minute because the person doing the editing is going to fall on them at the end to bring all of this together and they really can't afford to be rushing through it because that's when mistakes will get made and everyone else's hard work could potentially come unstuck if you don't have enough time at the end to bring it all together properly. A synchronisation clap is probably the single most important thing that I would like you to take away from today. Um, it is very, very, very important that it is um, easy to line up every single video clip and every audio file and you'll see that when I'm doing the editing demo later on. So the way to try and achieve this would be to have four or five bars of music or bars at the start of your backing track that you would use and agree in your planning that on the first beat of the third bar everyone's going to clap and make sure that that clap is on camera. That way the person editing the video can line up the claps, both the audio and the video, when the hands come together. And that makes it very easy for them to make sure that everyone is aligned properly at the start. And if there's problems later on down the line, you know right away that that's because someone hasn't played accurately, as opposed to, have I, the editor, have I lined up the videos properly? If I go back to the start and I know that all of those claps are in sync, any problems further on down the line are as a result of playing and I can go back and ask that person if need be to film that part again and resubmit it. It's very, very important. Um, make sure that the click track covers pauses and tempo changes. Now I'll talk at the end quickly about software for producing click tracks. And again, there is a free option. Um, I don't have much experience of doing this, but I, I would imagine that someone in your band community will have used programs like Sibelius that can you can score music and they can use something like that fairly quickly to pull together a, a click track that you can send to everyone for them to use. You might, um, if you have someone who's particularly good with these pieces of software, you might have the ability for them to put the entire score into that program and it'll actually give you a musical backing track that you could use as well. That's personal preference. There's more work involved in doing that. Uh, it's entirely up to you if that's something that you want to try and achieve. So filming tips. Um, when you're filming, and I can't see my camera here, so I'm assuming that everyone can still see me okay. But when you're filming, I would recommend that the phone or the camera is set up horizontally like this. Most people want to film holding like that. But when you look at a television, when you look at a computer, all of your video you watch on the screen this way. So I would suggest you try and get people. Now you can get, I've got a little clamp here. So this is a little tripod that you can get. They're not expensive. And something like this resting on a table would allow you to fit the phone into the clamp like that, rest it on the table, and that would allow you to then film your performances. So um, that's the first thing that I would say is get the orientation of the camera right and use um, use an environment that's well lit and um, so a nice bright room during the day if you can uh, and try and have the light source coming from somewhere behind the camera so 
today I've got a light up here which is giving enough light for, for this presentation today. Um, try not to sit with a window or a bright light behind the performer because the camera is going to struggle to, to separate that light from what you want to see, which is the person playing. So have a think about where you're going to sit in the room. Have a think about is there light coming in from the window that you can use and so on. Um, we've discussed the camera orientation. If you don't have access to a tripod, I mean, these are not expensive. You can get something like this for £20 or so. Um, you know, you might want to buy some as a band and pass them around the group as they're doing their performances. Um, but horizontal is best. And if you, can, if you can't use a tripod, then balancing against a book or something like that is something that you, you could do. I'm not going to get into technical details too much today, but try and have consistency with the settings that people choose on their cameras. Um, 1920 by 1080 refers to the resolution of the video, and that's standard high definition. That's what most modern smartphones will default to when you're filming. But you know, if you can, um, have a chat with your band, see what types of phones or cameras that they're going to be filming on, and invite them to just you know, go into the settings and, and, and set, agree on a consistent setting that everyone uses. That will make it easier, uh, as we'll see later. That will make it easier when editing everything together. So, moving on to audio. This is really important as well. This is the next most important aspect after getting that synchronisation clap in place. Um, try and make sure that the performers are in a quiet room with if possible, no background noise, but failing that, as little background noise as possible. You might think that a TV in the background or family chit-chat in the background isn't really going to get picked up. And it, it might not be the prominent sound in that clip, but by the time you add 25 different audio recordings and they've all got a little bit of noise, that all adds up and it can really, really take away from the quality of your final performance. And it's very, very difficult to edit out background noise without also causing some damage to the music, which is what we want to capture. Try to um, advise your, your players and your performers not to play too loud. Um, the microphone on most mobile phones can't cope with loud noises very well. And if you do play too loud, what happens is you lose the detail and the quality in that sound and it cannot be recovered. It's lost at the time of recording. So it's preferable to play slightly quieter. And for the instruments where the bell points forward, so the, the, the cornets, the flugelhorns, the trombones, particularly the trombones because they're amongst the loudest instruments, try and turn the bell of the instrument off to the side slightly so that the sound goes out into the room and then comes back round to be picked up by that microphone. Um, if you if you distort the noise and, and the, if you distort the sound of that instrument when you're recording, you can't recover it afterwards. It's gone. It's not coming back. So try not to play too loud. Invite your performers to listen to that track after they've recorded it. And if the louder sections sound crackly or distorted, tell them to go back, record it again, but don't play quite so loud. Don't play too quietly either. Now, I know that I'm sounding a little bit awkward there, but if players are performing the quieter sections and they're struggling to get quality of sound through, then tell them not to be afraid of putting more air through that instrument and get a little bit Play a little bit louder, but get the quality there, because actually we can quieten down the note if it's there, but we can't bring it up if it's not been produced properly. So you've got that scope at the bottom end to play a little bit louder, because we can make that quieter, but don't play too loud at the top end, because we can't, we can't recover it if it's lost at the top. If possible, if you have the resources and the equipment available, I would really highly, highly recommend using an external microphone and audio recorder. Um, proper microphones cost a lot of money, but the reason for that is that they're designed to handle 
loud music um, whilst still retaining the detail and the quality in that sound. Now, you don't have to spend thousands of pounds, but any USB kind of podcasting microphone or we'll have some, we'll have a look at some options towards the end. And if people want to message me after this, we can get into a chat. I don't really want to recommend specific products during this webinar. I'm trying to be impartial, but if people want to chat to me at the end about the type of microphone setups that you might want to consider, send a question in just now and I might do a video or a, a chat about that at the end. But uh, a good audio recorder with a condenser microphone would make a big, big difference to the quality of sound that you can record. So we've spoken about filming, we've spoken about audio, and I'm just watching my time here. Sending files, don't send them in WhatsApp, don't send them in Facebook, use a file sharing platform. Now again, I'll go into more detail on this at a later point. I want to move on to showing you a demonstration of all of this. Uh, use Google Drive, use Dropbox, use online tools like uh, transfer.sh. You can upload a file to that website and get a link and you can send that link via email to your um, editor and they can then download it. Don't use Facebook or WhatsApp because they compress the video and they compress the audio massively and that just reduces the quality of the final product that you can get. So try not to do that. I'm going to move, hopefully, uh, and if this doesn't work, John, if you can cut in and let me know. I'm going to move across to the software that I use, which is um, Adobe Premiere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, from scratch, I'm going to create a new project and bring in some videos that I have been sent and we'll edit them together into a, a trombone trio by our musical director, Louis Bettles. So first things first would be to create a new project uh, and we'll just call it um, Trio. Now, most of these video editing tools work in a very similar way. So I'm just going to update my hardware settings. Of course, this technology never works when you want it to. Uh, so yeah, we'll try that. So most of these tools are very similar in the way that they work. I don't have time today to go into a detailed tutorial, but I want to show you the main steps. And the first one is, of course, to create a new project. Now from there, you're going to have to take the video that you have collected. So over here, I have the three video clips that have been sent to me uh, using Google Drive rather than some other tool. So I'm going to take those videos and I'm going to drag them into my, uh, my media um, folder down here within the video editing software. Now, Lewis very kindly also recorded three audio tracks for me, um, which were recorded using a separate audio recorder. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not only going to line up the video from this, but I'm going to use the audio that was recorded separately using an audio recorder and bring all six items together in synchronization on the screen. So now that I've got them here, what I can do, I can pick the first video and if I double click on it, it'll open up at the top left in my source view. Now that allows me preview my way through that and what I'm looking for is that clap at the start so you can see at the start of that video um, Lewis brings his hands together about there so if I go back to where his hands first meet that's that point that I want to synchronize everyone with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark using the in point here I'm going to hit mark in and what that means is if I use the in and out points, anything that's highlighted between those points is what will come down onto my timeline when I drag down in a moment. So I want the start point to be where his hands meet and I want my end point just to be right at the very end of the clip. So I go to the end and put my out point at the very end. Now, this little icon here in Premiere, uh, other tools have similar functions. It allows me to just take the video only and bring it down onto the timeline. So now what I've got is I've got a video clip on my timeline and that video clip starts when his hands come together. So that's the first video. Let's do the same with the second video. Let's scrub forward just to where his hands come together. There I'm going to mark my end point again and then go right to the very end. 
mark my out point and then I'm going to drag that down. Now, this goes from left to right. I don't want to put that clip after the first clip. I want to put it directly on top of the first clip on a separate video channel. Now, at the moment, when you look over to the right, you can't see two clips. You can only see one clip, right? And that is because we have the clips stacked on top of each other. We'll sort that. Uh, we'll sort that very shortly. Um, and in fact, you can see right away the problem that we have over here, which we'll have to fix in a minute. So the problem we've got here is that because Lewis has filmed with his phone that way instead of that way, when we've imported those videos into uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, it's given us a, a window which is the wrong way. I want that to be rotated 90 degrees. So we're going to have to do something to fix that. And that's why I said it's important to try and film everything that way rather than that way because it creates problems when we start to edit things together. But we'll fix it. We'll fix it very shortly. So, third clip. Let's get them all lined up first. So, there. There's the clap. I'm going to mark my in point again. I'm going to go to the end, mark my out point, and I'm going to drag that video down one more time onto the top there. Now, um, I'm now going to create a new a new sequence which is set up correctly. Uh, so it's not. So if you look at this sequence now, what I've done is I've made a new sequence over here, and if you look at this one, you can see that this is the right orientation. It's this way, and not this way. What I can now do, because I've already lined these clips up, if I copy these three clips, select them all, copy them, move them across onto my new sequence. I now have everything lined up properly, but oh, I've still got a problem because actually that's zoomed in and it's too big. So how do I fix that? Well, in Premiere Pro, there is a little function that I can use. I can right click and I can go scale to frame size. And if I do that with all three videos, scale to frame size and scale to frame size, I now have all three video clips exactly the right height but now I've got these black bars either side and again this is the problem that happens when you film this way rather than this way it doesn't matter here because I'm actually going to move the clips because we want to see all three clips on the screen at the same time so with one of my clips selected I'll take the top one first up here on the left I have a thing called effect controls and if I click on effect controls you can see here there's an option called position now if i click on position don't know if you noticed what happened over here i've got a blue border and that allows me to scale and move that video clip so i can move that video clip on the screen so let's just move it across over here um, now you can you can eyeball this or you can actually type in numbers specifically numbers over here for the position and the scale. Today for quickness, we're just going to eyeball it and just going to click and drag and move these things across. So now what we've got is we have three videos that are lined up where those hands meet and they're all positioned on the screen so that we can see them. But we don't have any sound yet, so how do we do that? Well, it's exactly the same as what we did before. If I double click on one of those audio clips down here, it opens up as well. But actually, we see the audio rather than the, the video. Now, if I zoom in on the left-hand side here, you can actually see the sound waves associated with that clap. And I can do exactly the same thing as I did before. I can mark my endpoints where that sound is, and then I can drag that audio clip down onto the timeline. Now if I very quickly go through the others with the same process, let's zoom in, let's select that clap, mark our endpoint. I can use the letter I on the keyboard to do the same thing. Drag that down as well. And then the third one, again, move forward, let's zoom in right into that clap there, mark my endpoint, drag my audio down. 
and you can see on this timeline now that if we if we all zoom right in, you can see that the audio lines up with Lewis starting to play his instrument. Now, um, I'm not sure. I can't hear this just now, but hopefully, hopefully you can. Hopefully you can hear that in the presentation. Um, but that should be lined up now. Now, when I start playing that, if I pause that now and look over here, this is the audio meter. And you can see that at the top here, that's red. Now that means that the total audio that's coming in from these three clips is too loud for one track for the final output. That's to be expected because if you add all of those tracks together, that's a lot more audio than just one track on its own. So you would have to then spend some time um, mixing your audio uh, and, and turning those volumes down. Now we can do that very quickly in here. Up the top there's an audio clip mixer. Now I know that I'm running through this very quickly and there's a lot to take in. You would have to, if you're completely new to video editing, you will have to go and watch some tutorials about all of these things online. Now, at the moment, if I turn down the audio on all three of those clips, say 5 or 6 dB, if I go back and play that section again, you can now see that the audio is near to the top, but it's not quite going into that red zone at the top, and that's what you want to try and get for your that's what you want to try and get for your full performance. You want the audio to be nearly at the top, but not quite. So that's the foundations of how this would work. You then might want to spend some time fine tuning the positions. You might want to bring in more players. You might want to add in other audio effects, some reverberation or, or, or other uh, effects. Again, though, um, I don't really have time to go into that in detail today. This was really just a a demonstration to show you how you would start to bring together a virtual band performance um, and that's why I stress the importance of the timing and allowing you enough time uh, to bring all these things together because it really is a complicated thing to do with lots of moving parts um, especially if you start to have problems where you need to fine tune and tweak individual players performances it can get very very complicated very very quickly um, so it's just a very brief introduction. Uh, I'm going to move on quickly because I'm conscious of the time. I've got about 15 minutes I think left so I'm going to move on just now but if there are any questions about editing tutorials please please put them in the chat and I'll try and do some more content over the coming weeks to try and address some of those questions if I can. Um, so equipment. We've touched on tripods and phone holders you can get larger tripods that sit on the ground and come up to head height that are maybe better. You know, this still needs to go on a table. Uh, you might not have a table or something at the right height in a room, uh, particularly if you want to stand whilst you're playing. Uh, so phone holders, maybe seven or eight pounds online, um, and they're designed to attach onto the bottom of a camera tripod. Uh, and then these tripods, again, six or seven pounds online for a small one and anything from 30 to 90 pounds for a, a larger tripod. Some people might have video cameras or uh, DSLR cameras, so that's something like this, um, which they might want to use to do their filming. That's fine, as long as they can get those videos to you and as long as they can set the resolution on that camera. Uh, to tie in with what we discussed earlier, uh, then that's fine, they can do that. And in fact, you might get better results with something like that than you might get from a mobile phone. Uh, they are expensive, however, not everyone has access to them, and I appreciate that people have to try and work with what they have. Uh, the best camera that you've got is the one, or the best camera is the one that you have with you. So, microphones and audio recorders, we explained earlier the importance of good sound. I would recommend looking online either for a standalone audio recorder uh, with a good microphone. Uh, companies like Tascam and Zoom in particular uh, have audio recorders. I myself use a Zoom H6 audio recorder, which is what 
the sound for this is running through today, um, and then any reasonably priced cardioid condenser microphone on a microphone stand um, is probably going to be a good start. Again, I'm not going to go into specific product recommendations in this video, but I'm happy to speak to people afterwards if they want to get in touch with me. Um, there's lots and lots of options out there, though it's a massive market that will all work well. There's no one right answer. Um, I would have a have a look online at some tutorials and some reviews and decide what works best for your needs. Um, lights. We haven't really discussed lights. Uh, I have a small USB powered battery light up here just now, just to put a little bit more light into the room to make my video a bit clearer. You can get uh, battery powered lights for twenty or thirty pounds now. So, if as a band or a group you want to spend two, three, four hundred pound, you could put together some tripod kits for people to use with their own mobile phones. Maybe a couple of reasonable quality microphones with a couple of audio recorders and a couple of lights that could be passed around for people to film separately, or alternatively, people could come together into a, a central hall environment. Um, and, and film in a socially distanced, safe way using a, a set of equipment that you've purchased for that purpose. That might work as well. Um, obviously, current restrictions notwithstanding. Moving on then, software. We obviously need software to, to bring all of this together. You're not going to find a piece of software that you can dump all of the video in and push a button and it'll do all of this for you. It's just not, it's not feasible. Uh, you will have to rely on um, proper video editing software, a multi-track video editing program. Now, what I was using today was Adobe Premiere Pro. That's a paid program and it, it is quite expensive. It's a monthly or an annual subscription to Adobe's Creative Cloud family of applications. I do use a lot of them, so it's worth the investment for me, but it might not be for everyone. Um, Final Cut Pro, if you have an Apple computer or access to an Apple computer, Final Cut Pro is very good as well. Um, it is paid, but it's a single payment. I think it's about £320, but you pay once and you have access to it indefinitely. Um, DaVinci Resolve is the other one, and this is the one that I would recommend if you're starting out in this it is a full featured professional video editing program but it's free uh, and it's basic entry level which has more than enough features to do all of the things that i've demonstrated today and to bring together a, a very professional um video for a, a virtual band performance it also in particular has very very good features for editing and mixing audio which some of the others cannot match even the paid ones. So DaVinci Resolve is what I would recommend you have a look at if you want a free video editing program. To produce click tracks and backing tracks, Sibelius First, I think is the free option for the Sibelius scoring and MIDI type software. Um, I believe that has enough, I don't have any experience with these programs, but I believe Sibelius has more than enough functionality to produce and edit together a click track for you to use. Again, have a look online, have a look on YouTube. Um, I have no experience with click tracks or Sibelius personally, but if there are questions, send them to me and I'll find answers for you and come back to you. Audio editing. You might want to edit your audio separately and then create one final audio track that you bring back into your video. Um, Adobe Premiere Pro has really good audio editing software, so I don't feel the need to do that at this level. Um, DaVinci Resolve also has very good audio editing software, um, but if you do want to have a look at um, standalone audio editing software, Audacity is a free option. Uh, it's not great for multi-track audio editing, but it is really good for taking individual recorded clips and cutting out noise or adjusting the audio levels, that type of thing, before you then bring that into uh, a multi-track editing software. Uh, Adobe Edition is good as well, but that's again paid and part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. 
uh, and Pro Tools, I think, is an Apple option. Again, that's paid. I believe that's a single payment option going forward. Um, you don't need to use standalone audio editing software for this type of project. You can do it all within DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro uh, and get results that you will be happy with. Now, that takes me to the end of this presentation. Hopefully I've gone through um, with you tips for recording, tips for editing things together. Hopefully that demonstration was of some use. The only other thing that I would point out is that your performers do need to have two devices, one with the click track and headphones to listen to as they're performing, and a second device for the filming aspect um, to record the video. They do need to be separate devices. Um, with that, uh, I hope you've had something useful from that. I hope there's been some learning in there for everyone. Uh, if there are any questions, John, that have jumped out at you that you want me to take very quickly, I'll try and do that. Um, if not, I will um, hand back over to you, John, and have a look at the questions after the fact, and I will produce something for you all. So thank you very much for your time.